This video is going to go over modeling a DC motor. So the DC motor, the first piece that we have here is our armature, which is our rotor coils. And this circuit looks something like this. We have some sort of VA voltage uh, source coming in. Uh, we have a resistance for our armature, RA. We have our inductance, LA. And then we have VB, our back EMF here. And then a current IA for that armature going around this circuit here. So if we apply the uh, voltage law here, we'll have VA minus RA times IA minus L or LA times DIA over DT minus VB here. This IA here, that's our state because our inductor needs a current state here. And then this VA, that's our source voltage, that's our input that we're using to power this uh, DC motor. And VB, as I said, is our back EMF in this case. So we can rewrite this equation to get our state space model equation or something close to it, where we have the rate of change of current is equal to one over LA times the sum of those other voltages there. So that's one part of the DC motor. The other part is our motor shaft. Uh, so that is the part that's physically spinning. So for the shaft, which has some sort of inertia J, we have a load torque that's try, we're trying to power, uh, it's trying to slow our system down. We have our velocity or angular velocity omega. And then we have our armature torque or the torque from uh, our electrical circuit that's gonna power this system. So it's very easy to just get our uh, equation of motion for this uh, and figure out the speed of our shaft's equation here. And then, like I said, this is our shaft inertia, J. Uh, TA is our torque from our armature circuit, and TL is our load torque, uh, which can represent a variety of different things. Uh, so now, our, there are two things that we need to use. Our motor torque is going to be proportional to our armature current, so that tau A that's equal to N times B times L times IA, all multiplied by R to convert it from a force uh, uh, to a torque. So N is our number of coils, that term in parentheses is our force, and R is the radius of the armature. And we can lump all those terms together uh, to get KT times I of A. And that KT, that's gonna be called our torque constant in this case. The other principle that we need to use is that our back EMF is related to our velocity, which our velocity is equal to R times omega in this case. So our back EMF VB is equal to N times B times L times V, or in other words, we can lump all that together if we replace V uh, with R omega to KB times omega. So this KB is our back EMF constant or our voltage constant, and note that our KB, our KT, and sometimes I'm going to write it as KV, those are all equivalently the same for this class uh, in terms of what we're going to cover. So they're all essentially the same value. So now to get our state space model, we're going to assign our states, which is going to be our current and our uh, angular velocity. We have two inputs. One is the voltage uh, source coming into the armature circuit, uh, say from a battery, for example. The other one is going to be that load torque, and we can get our state space model just by replacing those variables and putting in those KB and KV and KT terms into these equations. So we end up with our first state equation, which is going to represent our current dynamics, and our second state equation, which represents our angular velocity dynamics. And you can see here that each of them affect the other. So our velocity dynamics uh, uh, is impacted by our current dynamics and vice versa. Um, so now we can write out the circuit as uh, something that looks like this. And this is how I'll often represent a, uh, a DC motor in this class. So we have our armature circuit, that voltage, uh, back EMF voltage, uh, that will connect to our mechanical system. And I'm just going to put that KV there to represent that connection. That's essentially the parameter that represents that power transfer there uh, to our mechanical system. Okay, and so the last thing that we're gonna cover is power in versus power out. So electrical power in is gonna be P in, which is equal to VA times IA. That's the total electrical power that's coming into the system. And now for the power that's coming out, our mechanical power, that's equal to P out, which is our armature torque, TA, times omega, uh, which is actually the same thing as VB times IA. Or in other words, it's KT times IA times omega. That is the power that's actually coming out of this system. And so we can get an efficiency for this, which would be eta, which is equal to P out over P in. 
that is the same thing as kT I o, IA times omega divided by VA IA, or in other words, kT times omega divided by VA. That's the efficiency for your motor at any given time. Uh, so this is assuming that there are no mechanical losses, which we could add in, say, a damping uh, coefficient into that uh, uh, for the rotational system. And that's going to cover modeling a DC motor.